balancing chemical reactions. Uh, once you get the hang of this, it's going to be easy. It just takes a little bit of practice. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. So let's first review how to count atoms. I want to do that with this calcium phosphate. And notice that I put three moles in front of it just to make sure that you are all up to speed on counting atoms. Um, now let's pretend for just a second that that three wasn't there. If I'm counting atoms, I can see I have three calcium. Ooh, whenever you have parentheses, the subscript outside of the parentheses distributes. So I have two phosphorus and two times four, eight oxygen. Uh, so let's write that down, that two distributes to the phosphorus and to the oxygen. Now let's go ahead and add in this molar coefficient, three. So three will distribute, that coefficient distributes to every atom in the compound. So three times three, I'm going to have nine calcium. Three times two phosphorus, remember, I'm going to have six phosphorus. And then three times, I have eight oxygens. We are going to have 24 oxygen. So there's a little reminder on counting atoms. The coefficient distributes to every atom. The subscripts only apply to the atom that they fall on the right-hand side, except for parentheses, that subscript will, um, will distribute to every atom inside the parentheses. So good, quick review. All right, now here's the premise on balancing chemical equations, is conservation of mass. The number of atoms we start with has to be the same number of atoms we end with because you and I can't create atoms out of nothing and we can't take atoms and destroy them into absolutely nothing. So the atoms we begin with, that has to be the same number of atoms we end with. So to begin, I recommend that you do it this way. Underneath the yield sign, write down every type of atom you have. So we're going to have a phosphorus and chlorine right here. And then count, how many atoms do you have on each side? I have four phosphorus, two chlorine on the reactant side. On the product side, I've got one phosphorus and three chlorine. Now here's the deal. You can only use coefficients to change these numbers. And remember, coefficients multiply. So you're looking at what numbers we can multiply to get our atoms equal on each side. So if I have four phosphorus on the reactant, only one on the product, I know I have to multiply by four. So I put a four in front of the phosphorus. I now have four phosphorus. Now to keep track of this, I cross out the one and I write a four. Don't take the time to erase, you're doing this fast. Um, so just cross out that one and write the four. Well, when we did the four molar coefficient, remember that distributes. That goes to both the phosphorus and the chlorine, like this. So how many chlorine do I have? 12. So we're going to um, cancel out that three and put 12. All right, well, the phosphorus are great, but now my chlorine, I've got to fix that. I have 12 on the product, only two on the reactant. What number do I have to put right here to multiply by two to get 12? Six. There we go. Six times two gives us 12. I now have four and four phosphorus. Six times two is 12. Four times three is 12. 12 and 12 chlorine. It's balanced. Um, and the way you read this, one mole of phosphorus of P4 plus six moles of chlorine gas yields four moles of phosphorus trichloride. Okay, let's do this iron oxide. Now this one I'm going to do with you by inspection. So if you need to write out the atoms for a while to get the hang of this, great. You're going to get really fast and really good. Um, and you can just look at it and in essence keep this in your head. So let's first count atoms. One iron, two irons. Two oxygen, three oxygen. And I need to have the same number of atoms on each side. What catches my eye very first is I have an even and an odd number. I have to get the same number of oxygens. Um, I know the only way I can do that is the, is it the least common multiple? Is that what that's called? The smallest number that they both go into? Six. So I'm going to put a two in front of the iron oxide, the iron three oxide, and that is going to give me six oxygen. So over here, I have to put a three in front of the oxygen. Three times two is six. Two times three is six. Now let's look at the iron. I have four iron, two times two. So I put a four right there. 
Okay, another one. I chose this one purposefully because sometimes hydrocarbons in particular can get really big molar coefficients. Don't let it throw you. And I have a trick. I have a trick for you. Okay, I usually do hydrogen and oxygen last, just so that you know. So let's start with the carbon. We've got eight carbon, one right here. Let's go ahead and put an eight. Um, next, we'll do hydrogen. I've got 18 hydrogen, so let's put a nine right here. Nine times two gives me 18 hydrogen. Now let's check out our oxygen. I've only got two right here. Over here, 16 times, excuse me, eight times two is 16. And then nine times one is nine. Nine plus 16 is 25. 25, but that's an even number. Okay, you have one of two choices. When you run into this, what you can do is put a two. You can double everything. Put a two in front of the carbon and then go back and fix everything. But here's the trick. And we really only do this trick on combustion reactions. I'm thinking, okay, I need 25 oxygens to match the product. What can I multiply two by to get 25? Here it is. 25 halves. 25 over two times two oxygens, the two cancel, gives me 25 oxygens. So if you've ever seen a fraction, it's because of this very situation. <clears throat> now, if your teacher does not want you to leave any halves, here's the easy way to get rid of it. Multiply everything through by two. You'd have two, 25, 16, and 18. And you can go ahead and check that. We've got 16 carbon, 16 carbon. Uh, two times 18, 36 hydrogen. 18 times two, 36 hydrogen. Uh, 25 times two, 50 oxygen. 16 times two, 32 plus 18, 50 oxygen. I really like using that half. If you come up with oxygen even, and then your oxygen on the product side is odd, take this number, just divide it by two, and then you can multiply that whole reaction through by two and get everything as whole numbers.